I'm here with fashion photographer Miles Aldridge, who has been on the super stage talking. Um, what, what's been the what's been the, the the nub of your talk? What 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 have you been telling the people that have come to listen to you? Um, the, the theme of the talk was colour. I mean, my work is uh, sort of known for its sort of vibrant colour and the use of colour to sort of convey uh, sort of strong emotions and feelings in the picture. So um, I decided I did a kind of whole spiel on uh, my use of colour and, uh, you know, where it comes from, what it means and uh, how I get to it. You know? Yeah, well, I mean, you're absolutely right. Having, you know, seen your images, that, that, that's the thing that grabbed me about the, the kind of almost luxurious colour often, particularly in backgrounds and certainly in the way that you've got some of the people that you're photographing dressed. So, you know, where, where, do, where does that come from? Why, why, why go for, you know, why the vivid colour? It's something that clearly you love to do. Yeah, it's quite easy to answer that really. Um, when I was working with fashion magazines like Italian Vogue, uh, I sort of really wanted to do images that I found uh, slightly disturbing. That sounds a bit weird, but okay. I, my, my, my thinking was I didn't want to just be another fashion photographer. So, I, you know, there's, I didn't want this endless turning of pages and my pages to be part of this endless turning and churning of images, sort of all saying the same thing, which is often, you know, isn't it great to be rich? Isn't it great to be beautiful all these kind of like celebrations all the of, things I'm not clearly yeah but, or you me know. you know and so <laughs> I um, I thought well if I can do these sort of disturbing pictures people are sort of questioning their role in the consumer society questioning who they really are questioning why they have these luxuries and make them sort of in a way anti uh, statements about the, the consumer society I can probably get away with that as long as they're really beautifully coloured. So, as you, a nice word you use, luxury. The colours are sort of a luxury. They, uh, you know, they really like kind of draw you in. And actually, what I like is that they draw people in, and then they realise they sort of observe something where the core of the picture is not necessarily happiness. The core of the picture may be more anxiety, maybe more de even depression, uh, uncertainty, questions about you know who I am, and all these sort of big sort of uh, big questions. And by that time it's too late because you've already absorbed the picture. So in a way my trick was always been to kind of uh, make things look really beautiful and sumptuous and luxury like you said. But then actually the message underneath is a little bit more disturbing and um, you know, knocks you slightly. For that's, that's really what I was trying to do with the work, with the, with the magazines. Okay. Just because I sort of found the general quality of imagery in the magazines quite sort of anodyne. And just okay. sort of like one, so what was a one story really, you know? Right. So you're just trying to go a little bit deeper with your with your fashion work. Yeah, just work. to question it really, and uh, the colour as a way of sort of making people uh, drawing them into it. You know? Well, I guess that's interesting because obviously a lot of you know you, you look at fashion. Fashion generally is quite surface, of course, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely, so, it's all so, surface. Yeah. Yeah. So you're you're trying to trying to sort of delve a little bit deeper. You could say underneath. I'm sort of digging, scratching the, the veneer of uh, the fashion magazines. But yeah, I mean, I was lucky enough to work, the fashion magazine that I particularly worked with, I was lucky enough to work with was uh, Vogue Italia. And uh, the boss there, Franca Sozzani, uh, she was very keen that the images were not your everyday mm -hmm. uh, celebration of uh, success. There was uh, sort of some questioning of uh, what this all means. And believe it or not, they didn't have the, you'd think that would sort of mean that people wouldn't, want that message they wouldn't buy that message you know who, they, they wouldn't then need to buy all these things but actually it was the most successful fashion magazine of its day uh, because people went to it because it was a bit more had more substance to it really okay you yeah, know yeah. I understand so out of all the genres that you could have chosen when you started out in your photographic career yeah. wh why fashion what what drew you into this industry uh, well, I, I fell into fashion, uh, and it's a story that many people have heard, and they might be sick of hearing it, but basically I had a girlfriend who wanted to be a model, and I took some pictures, which ended up in a portfolio, and then that portfolio went to Vogue, and Vogue said, hey, who's got these pictures? And the rest, okay. in a way, is sort of history. So I followed up on that, and uh, I think, you know, of all the genres, fashion was the one that let me kind of, in a way, pretend I was a film director. So I could really kind of like large it up, uh, you know, build a big set, lots of lights, um, you know, be a sort of, um, well, be the author of my work. Uh, I think a lot of photography genres, like documentary, I mean, not that I, first of all, I would not be very good at it because many people 
much more able to kind of catch things on the street and uh, see moments, predict moments, like Martin Parr, for example. Someone like that can kind of like see something happening, I imagine, to get these incredible pictures. For me, I see what's happened, and then I go back to a studio and rebuild it. Okay. You know, whether it's like a, a bottle of ketchup that's smashed on the floor, or um, you know, a woman in a playground pushing a swing with no child on it, I see those things, log them, and then I actually I sketch them, I do drawings. It's quite a ah, laborious okay. process. Because you were an illustrator in your I, early life? I was life? an illustrator, yes. I, right. I straight after school, I went to art school, became an illustrator, and um, enjoyed that. And in the way I am still an illustrator, I mean, what you're doing with just using a camera yes. is to basically illustrate a point, a concept about uh, the world, you know. So, um, but I've, yeah, more than that, I found the illustration that I did very useful as far as doing sketches that I could then show to my set designer or to my or to the magazine to get the job sure. commissioned you know yeah no absolutely and and just to describe uh, i mean you, you mentioned the, you know the lighting setups and yeah. built building scenes and the, the set if you like yeah. a, a, a typical miles shoot then has obviously got quite a lot of lights going on you like that control I that do. precise control don't I, you i do yeah we we i mean i i'm lucky enough i work with broncolor who uh, su sort of support my vision and uh, so I'm able to kind of use all their sort of toys and tools to kind of get what I want. And actually, um, the quality of light I get from their uh, kit is fantastic. Uh, but it is a lot of power, a lot of light. And because I'm working with very small f-stops, f-16, f-22, that kind of explosion of light that I get from um, a, a, a sort of brom pack exploding mm. uh, light over the picture is the way that my pictures have a sort of slightly unreal quality because we sort of, you know, Although we can focus on everything here, uh, we don't see everything in that kind of pristine focus uh, that you get from that kind of light intensity. Uh, so that is one of the sort of uh, one of the sort of the elements I, I utilise in order to give the work its sort of specific look. Yeah. Okay. I understand that. Now I've got I, I was particularly drawn to um, the shots from the the, the Game of Thrones portrait. Oh yes, sure. Now I'm probably the only person in the world who's never seen Game yes. of Thrones, but I understand <laughs> enough about the culture around Game yes. of Thrones to know yes. how it works. So, so tell me a little bit about that shoot. You know, was that a particularly interesting yeah. one to do? Very interesting. It was. Uh, I mean, like you, I was not actually a. Uh, an aficionado of the show, <laughs> I hadn't seen it, but I was aware of it, my kids were watching it, and so I uh, was quite happy when I was invited to go and shoot some of the cast in Los Angeles, and with the, with the idea of shooting the rest of it, and the cover for Time magazine in London. Um, and I, I have a sort of long-term sort of interest in sort of Renaissance painting, you know, so much in there for me to kind of feed off, like whether it's composition or the human figure, lighting, uh, intrigue, and also the, a lot of these paintings are sort of mysterious, you don't really even know what they're saying, and mystery is a part of the thing I like to have in my pictures too. But um, there's a certain sort of sub-genre sub called, uh, of, of paintings called the Northern Renaissance, which is Albrecht Dürer and Lucas Cranach and so forth. And I sort of focus on these guys as an inspiration to do these kind of very intimate portraits, but it's often kind of like some symbolic object, like a pomegranate or a, a flower, uh, which uh, or a skull or a dagger, you know. So we use sure. all these objects, and um, yeah, it was it was a great shoot. When I went to Los Angeles, the uh, the two actresses um, had been partying at the SAG party the night before, and so they were quite hungover. Okay. So I had some massive transformation <laughs> job from these like worn out teenage girls <laughs> to make them look like um, well, look fabulous. But that's part of the job, and also. To be honest, part of their job, and they really rose to the uh, challenge. Um, and we got the pictures. I guess working with actresses and actors is probably easier in that respect because they know how to kind of pose in a sense. It can be, yeah. Sometimes you find actually weirdly with an actor or an actress, this is a bit more problematic because they want to know the wherefore and why of everything, whereas a model is quite happy to kind of, you know, be put a, you know, trust you and go with it. Sure. So, yeah, yeah, sort of like, you know, just come f jumping through that broken glass window, please. You know, something like that. Whereas an actor would say, well, but why? You know, and what's, what's behind it? And who am I? You know, and you're, oh, for God's sakes, just <laughs> get on with it. Um, but yeah, you know, they, in that case, they were the, um, the Game of Thrones cast, they were all great. And um, coincided that while we were doing the, um, 
uh, cover mm -hmm. that it was my son's birthday in okay. London, and he's a huge fan. So he got um, all the cast of Game of Thrones sung him Happy Birthday. Wow. Which was, I mean, I got massive dad points. Cool, for that. You were cool dad on that cool day. Dad. So that's that one time yeah. you're cool dad. That's is that the right? one and only time. Yeah, <laughs> I've yet to beat that one. I don't think I ever will. No, probably not. And just quickly, in terms of kind of um, fashion and portrait and, and working with models, then, yeah. are you are you you know are you the type of photographer that's talking to the person you're photographing oh, all yeah. the time and putting them at their ease, or you know, because I talk to some you know yeah. some fashion photographers it's who yeah. say they like they almost like them to be a bit uneasy, but you're, you're you don't you work that way. Uh, no, I like unease in my pictures because I think you know there's a lot of photography out there that is super easy. Of course, I mean that's sort of a definition of kind of photography, quite you know. So I like older photography where there's a kind of stiffness to the picture. I do like that, and so I, I try and get that. But I will always kind of like you know prefer to work with the model and sort of explain to her what we're after rather than make her feel you know, uncomfortable in the position, in this situation. But yeah, no, I mean, all the hairdressers, makeup artists, models, stylists, all the people that kind of contribute to the work, it's so important and they give so much. Uh, and it's a very intense day, it's typically one day. When I started, it was three days. Uh, and now we have a day typically to do a, a, a sort of fashion shoot and get it all done um, in the time. Everyone always kind of like, it amazes me with their commitment to the work, whether it's the model or the stylist or the, the, the hair and makeup team. It's a, it's, they bring a lot. Sounds great. Okay, yeah. I think we're probably probably running out of time now. Uh, you have a website where people can see your work. Sure, milesaldridge.com. Milesaldridge.com. Yeah. Um, go and have a look at this guy's work. It's, it's very colourful and very powerful. Thank you, Miles. It's been a pleasure. My pleasure too. Cheers. Bye-bye.